All right, it's a nice pretty day today and I've got to get some mowing done. I've got to mow my cornfield down and we got to go ahead and plant some wheat. It's about that time of year and I'm sure you know why. But uh, today I've got to hook up the old sickle mower and I've got the PTO clutch on the old 8N. So we got to show you how to take that off and we'll show you what we're going to put on there to make it work. You don't really need an overrun clutch with a sickle mower because there's not enough friction pushing the tractor and you can stop and it'll pretty much keep spinning and it won't push it it'll push it just a little but nowhere near as bad as the bush hog the bush hog with all that centrifugal motion of the blades will push that tractor 10 15 feet so we're going to show you how to do that all right so this is a overrun clutch and the way this thing works is it's just a clutch where in one way it engages i have the pto shaft engaged right now so now it won't spin in one direction that's the rotation of your shaft. So that puts the rotation into your PTO shaft. And then when you stop, it spins freely. So that way it will not push your tractor. And this one has been, it's pretty old. It's been used and abused. I've had this thing for years. So pretty much what you gotta do is you're gonna have to have a couple tools. You're gonna have to have a hammer. Small, you don't have to have a big hammer, just a small hammer you're pushing knocking in a roll pin, you gotta have a punch and a 17, 7 16 wrench. So what you gotta do now is you've got to take off these grease fittings right here. But this is where you access your roll pin. You gotta take them both out so you can drive that roll pin out. So we got one out. Now I'm gonna spin it over. And we gotta take the other one out here. And this is the one that's probably four years ago. I got it a little bit cross-threaded when I started it. And it's always been a little bit tighter, but it's still, I didn't get it too bad. I don't know. That's what you don't wanna do. Now it's covered in gravel. <laughs> but I'll get that and clean that off here in a minute. So what you got to do is just kind of spin it, right there it is, you got to spin it where it lines up with your roll pin. And the center, if you can tell, let's see if I can get that zoomed in there, you can tell how it works, it kind of just spins around. So now you got it lined up with your roll pin, you're going to take your punch, and I need to set my camera up here. Alright, I think I got it set up there where you can see. But what we gotta do now is take our little hammer. You don't need a big one. And you gotta take that punch. And you're gonna drive that roll pin right out the bottom. And now, see what we So now, we've driven that punch right out the bottom here. So now, it is free of the spines. And see how that thing got greased. I greased the snot out of it before I used it last because I did a whole lot of bush hogging. So that roll pin goes through the center and holds the clutch onto the shaft. So now what I'm gonna show you is how to install it. So from the start, you wanna make sure you got some grease in there on your splines. And what you do now not get grease everywhere is you're gonna lightly tap it's real light and it'll kind of self line up and you can feel it it'll go right in that hole so now what we got to do is we got to get our punch and we got to keep hitting it just a little bit all right so what we have to do is we've got a counter sink this punch or the pin, the roll pin, and we're just gonna sink it in there a little bit, probably a quarter of an inch. And you'll know when you're deep enough because it will not turn until you've got that roll pin in deep enough. But you got to be careful, you don't want to get it too. Let me take this out of gear, you don't want to get it in too far because then on the opposite side it will come right through. So you just want to get it in. The other side. You want to get it in just far enough 
where the other side is about flush with the metal on the inside. It's really hard to see down in there, but you, you don't want to get it in too deep because then it'll be hitting on this side and you don't want to not get it in far enough. Pretty much whenever you feel it, it was spinning, it's in far enough. But you want to check the other side because some roll pins I've used are on a sixteenth of an inch shorter and you want to make sure it's kind of centered up center mass in there. And then now all you would do is put your uh, grease fittings back on and pump some grease in there and you're good to go. It's always a good idea to put a little grease on your shaft there too. So now I'm going to take this thing back off just the way I showed you and we're going to install our little God, I cannot remember for the life of me what that's called. Original 8 in size shaft, which is, I have to look it up and I'll probably put it in the text, but I'll look it up and see. But this is a bigger size because that size, that is the size of the original 8 in shafts. And right at an inch. This I think is an inch and an eighth. I believe is what it is. I can't remember, but pretty much it makes the size larger. And this is your common PTO shaft size, but these old 8 ins they didn't come with that size. You can change out your PTO shafts, or get out in the tractor to a bigger size, but I have not went there yet because I still have to use the overrun clutch anyway. So it's not really a big deal. But now we're gonna go ahead and take that back off and put this on. I've got it lined up. I'm going to take it off just the way I should. I like to hold my hand down there so that thing doesn't go flying. That's somewhere. So now, these are a little bit tricky. It's hard to see. Can I get it to focus in there? You see the roll pin is down in there because it's a real, it's only about quarter inch thick because it catches on one of the grooves right here one of the splines but you've got to knock that back out that's the way I normally keep mine because I always have a hard time losing those pins and if you lose them Lord help you trying to find one last time I lost one I ended up just having to buy a whole new piece so now all you're gonna do is you're gonna slide this right over that's the end you want to go in. I'm going to just tap that in. Let's start it ever so slightly. Nope. I'm going to knock it back out. So this pin has been used a lot, so I'm just going to take it completely out. A lot of times you can get them just kind of started in there before you beat it on. And it'll just kind of hold it in place, but it'll be just as easy because I can line up the holes. So now I'm just going to slide it on. Line the holes up. And this works the exact same way. The roll pin is just the length of the outside diameter of the coupling. So, what you got to do is knock it down flush ever so slightly and check on both sides and see where you're at. You see, I'm still a little bit high on this side. So that looks pretty flush right there. I'll give it a spin. Use just a little bit more. This doesn't take too much force. It pretty much just keeps this coupling from falling off, which they will do. Those roll pins get old and you use and abuse them and running them hard they will come off i know that for a fact we got that installed man i'm covered in grease trying not to get my hand in there got that in there now what i was talking about was right here you want to make that flush and then you want to get it kind of flush spin it around and make sure it's flush on that side so that's pretty much it so that's how you take off the overrun clutch and you put on a uh, size adapter well that wasn't too hard they're pretty easy it takes about five ten minutes once you get the hang of it to swap them out take them off but those overrun clutches will save your life absolutely save your life especially if you're mowing around big ditches or ponds over the years i mow around the pond down here and i've about went in if 
before I even had the overrun clutch or really knew much about them, I was mowing around there and kind of cut it close and I went to hit the clutch and was hitting the brakes and nothing was happening and my front tire just about went right in. It started going off and thank the Lord, it, uh, it stopped right before I went in. But you gotta be careful with the bush hog and eight in because it will hurt you and it'll tear your tractor up and everything. That overrun clutch is very important. I can't stress it enough when you're using a bush hog. If you're around anything that you can hit, you need it and you need to invest in it. It is worth the money. They're only about, I haven't bought one in years, but I think they're about 70 bucks. And you can get them from Tractor Supply. I think Ag Supply sells them. But you definitely want to look into getting one because it'll save your life 100%. So I appreciate everybody watching. Hope this helps somebody out that uh, doesn't know how to put those on. And please subscribe. Thank you so much for all those you already have. I'm really hoping we can get this thing going. We're up to, uh, I think it was, I checked this morning, 112 subscribers, which is awesome. And let me know what you want to see. I've been trying to just kind of feel it out. I'm going through all my videos, looking at the views, and just trying to see what everybody's into. And it seems like, I think my, uh, my most viewed videos on outboard motors. And, you know, just let me know what you want to see. I love fishing, hunting. I do pretty much everything. I piddle around with everything. And I love working on stuff. That's one of my favorite things to do when I'm home. I'm always working and piddling on stuff, tractors and moats, boats and motors and everything. So just let me know what you want to see and appreciate everything. Thank you for watching again and we'll see you next time. Yeah.